This is day four of our mission across the Pacific from the west coast of Mexico to French Polynesia, and we found a volcano in the middle of the ocean. This is what we woke up to. It's kind of amazing and a little surreal. It's a tiny island, about a mile wide and two and a half miles long, all of which is a volcano. I've never experienced things like this in my life. I mean, I've been to the beach for a vacation or I've gone to like national parks and walked around in crowds of people, but this place is completely deserted. In yesterday's video, we pushed off the docks to start this epic journey and I was seasick within hours and this video series almost didn't happen. I was dead weight for three days until it finally passed last night just as we arrived here. This is the first day that I'm actually fully coherent and perfect timing because today I'm going up that 76 foot mast. It sounds simple in principle, but it's pretty terrifying up there. Captain Colin is going up in a bosun's chair, which is basically a sling with a hard bench built into it. I brought my climbing harness on this passage because I had dreams of making this video right here for Halloween. But unfortunately, we never had the chance. These lines are designed to hold thousands of pounds of force from the sails slamming and flapping. I said my life depends on this. Your law. So my mere 200 pounds should be nothing. Yeah, this knob right here, don't oh, fuck up the bone. I wouldn't do that. He literally tied it wrong at first. He's fixing it right here, but it's still better than what I could have done. I'm on the spinnaker halyard and Captain Colin is on the main halyard. Halyards are the lines that pull the sails up. Sheets pull them downwards. So our lives are literally in Steve and Jamie's hands. Not a big deal on the way up because there's a clutch that prevents the lines from slipping. But on the way down, you're literally holding the line and using the friction against the winch to You're slowly good. drop oh. us down. Super wobbly up here. That blue line is mine and that yellow black one is Collins. I'm basically sitting at the level of the Raymarine radar. So all of the rigging on this boat is brand new. We actually replaced it all days before we left Mexico and we've been breaking it in all the way here. Now they just need a little bit of retightening and that's what we're doing up here. These diamond shrouds are under these diamond shrouds right here, the green ones, are under tremendous pressure. 5,000 pounds to be precise. So that's why you need two people up here to get enough leverage to get these turnbuckles to move. They put so much tension on the mast that it actually causes it to bend backwards like this, which is what we want. Right now we don't have enough bend at the top half of the mast. That's why we need to tighten this upper diamond. But we have to do it perfectly even on both sides. Otherwise the mast will bend to the left or to the right, which is very bad. See a great white. So there's meant to be manta rays and even great whites here at San Benedicto Island. Aside from us, there was only one boat out there. It was a dive boat. San Benedicto is known for manta rays and we actually saw one on our sail in last night. This is definitely the best vantage point. If you look up diving San Benedicto, there's a shot of this massive tiger shark just swimming around this pack of divers. That was the one video I watched before coming here. The girls actually went looking for those sharks. We're going to find some hammerheads. Ah! And some manta rays. And for a moment there, I wasn't so scared about being so high up anymore. I think I can, I think I can. Holy cat, we're far from the boat. Sharks terrify me. Okay, look. It's definitely bending aft. Maybe one more and we're done. Uh, those are gone. What was that? My sunglasses fell. Sunglasses fell? That's right. I knew that would happen. I always lose at least one pair of glasses on every passage. That's why I keep the nice ones as backup. Oh yeah. Wood inlaid, copper and stainless steel frame. A one of a kind pair from Holzkern who was kind enough to support our mission to sail across the Pacific Ocean. How do you like that segue? Holzkern is a small family business from Austria. You know, home of the Terminator. Get to the chopper! Oh, get to and Red Bull. Their products are super unique because they find a way to incorporate wood, mother of pearl, marble, or meteorite into every single design. I mean, look at how happy these girls are. Why? Mother of pearl in their glasses. And this couple here so in love because of that marble face watch with that maple wood band. And I ordered Mary the same one, so soon she'll be looking at me with those same eyes of passion. Their main product line is men's watches, so I might get one to match her. Shipping is always free to North America and Europe. If you're in the market for a super unique men's watch, or if you're looking to give the wife a reason to let you spend more time working on that boat, consider supporting our channel and clicking the link below to check out Holzkern. And make sure you use promo code DAVIDSHEAF15 for a nice discount. Before we came down, I made the cap take some thumbnail pics. 
<laughs> and then I made him take some more of me. And if I was a hot girl in a bikini, this would have been our thumbnail and we would have gotten a million views on this video. We did it. We did it. Master has a beautiful bend in it towards the aft and it's dead straight. A celebratory drink for not falling to my death. Cheers. Mm. Thanks for not dropping me. They just spotted a manta ray. They're literally 30, 30 yards from the boat. Brits say, manta ray, manta ray, manta ray. Let's cut to the footage. These guys are massive, like bigger than our camper van and weigh almost 3,000 pounds. Mantas are the prehistoric birds of the sea. Wings flapping, which make them look like they're flying through the water. Up front are the feeding lobes that funnel the water into their mouths so they can feed. It's crazy that we saw three of them in just the day that we were here. And I can't wait to get my family out here so they can experience all this magic for themselves. El Cap throws in the small dinghy to go pick up the snorkelers, but then he decides to give everyone a treat and take them for some snorkeling on steroids. On a rope behind a dinghy. We're gonna take the tiny little baby dinghy, look at that cute little dinghy, and drag those crazy people in search of some manta rays. I'm gonna drone it and film it. You see five times as much with half of the effort and you actually feel like a fish flowing through the water. So the only way you can even dive in this area is through a little- Liveaboard dive boat. That's the only way you can dive this area. You can't fly in. There's no airport here. Volcano only. I'm taking more thumbnail pics here because you never know which one's gonna work. And that's a freaking volcano behind us. This is my first volcano, by the way. We drop everyone off at the boat, and then we go explore a bit. I wanted to set foot on this island, this volcano, so bad, but it's forbidden, so we didn't do it. One day, I'm gonna hike a volcano. A cool thing about sailboats is you basically have a couple of built-in cranes everywhere you go. We're lifting the dinghy with the same halyard that pulled me up the mast. You push the load away as it pulls it up, and then you can just set it on the deck. You can even lift out your engines the same way. San Benedicto Island. Coming across this little island was such a nice rest that we needed. We've done three days so far, 10% of our total 3,000 mile journey. How many days at sea will we be? El Capitan. Between 20 and 22 days, I think, from here. What's gonna increase the timeline or decrease? The amount of wind. It's like a game now to try keep the boat in the trades. They're doing a clockwise circle in the northern hemisphere and then a big anti-clockwise circle in the southern hemisphere and then band oh. in the middle where they don't meet. Like right now, we got 13 knots of apparent wind. We're only doing six and a half knots. If that was more like 20, we'd be smoking it downwind. I'm about to go experience some food. <laughs> it's good. Except for I'm on a diet. This is cooked with um, salt water in the pasta. 100% salt water. And then Colleen added more salt. <laughs> There's a lot of salt in there. I'm going to try to stay away from the pasta though because I am on a diet. I'm going to eat like Colleen. Look at her. I have asleep. pasta underneath. She we just left the island, hit the ocean. Dave yeah. says, awake. Another half an hour, he'll be asleep for another few days. See you away. The wind is mostly behind us now, so one way to gain some speed and maybe shave off a couple of days is to use a more efficient downwind sail. This one is called the Card D. It connects to the bow sprint. Fucking hell. And it requires a few of us to set it up. Unlike the other sails that are permanently mounted, this one, you have to pull it out of the bag, connect it to the halyard, the same one that pulled me and the dinghy up, and then haul it all the way to the top of the mast. Then it needs to be unfurled, which is easy on the way out but pulling it in, oh my gosh, it's a beast because you're fighting the wind. Go, Dave, go, go! Faster, faster! Tomorrow's video is actually about the four types of sails that you need to sail across the Pacific Ocean. Make sure you subscribe because you're gonna get to see one of them blowing out and tearing in half. Vince, can you release this? This is our crew of eight. I love these guys. We became a family on this passage. Like four years with your college buddies squeezed into a month. We're taking yet another thumbnail here. Yes, we take a lot of thumbnails. And halfway through, one of the reels starts screaming. We're rolling. Have you got two? And then another one goes off. Holy shit. And then a third. We had three fish on the line. Crazy, dude. That's a huge oh, one. I got one. I got one too. Holy <laughs> fuck. <laughs> and they're all huge. This is so heavy. Oh. Hold on, hold on, let's do it. Why is he so good? Everyone, get out, Dave! I'm, I'm happy for David's help. For sure, a big one. One of my favorite foods is sashimi, and my favorite type of sashimi is tuna. Look at that. Yes! Yellowfin tuna! 
And one more thumbnail just in case. The thing is, you never know what the video is going to be about, so you have to have a thumbnail ready for every possibility. <laughs> now Jamie starts the hour-long process of cleaning these two epic yellow fin tuna. Some may argue that they're big eyes. They're going to be yellow fin to me forever. We have eight people on board, and we have like one fridge and one and a half freezers, which means we can't bring enough meat to last us all the way across. And that's why we fish. So once I bag this up, we're gonna cry back it, see what we fit in the freezer. We're only taking what we need. We never get too much. The best part of the tuna is this tiny little section called Otoro, and it literally melts in your mouth. It's the super fatty part of the belly. Marbled just like a steak. That costs around 20 bucks a piece. All right, I'm trying to get Jamie to cut me out some of the Otoro. That right there, number three. It's this part right here. Is that it? I think so. It's going. Dude, let it go. Look at what Jamie did to this beautiful tuna that we caught. As fresh as it gets. He even cut all the worms out, so. <laughs> there were worms in it? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Dave just keeps saying that. Did you get the worms cut out? Yeah. I'm terrified of parasites in my fish. Sushi restaurants will flash freeze it at minus 35 degrees to kill everything. But you only live once. Do the honors. We ate like kings and took in that epic sunset together. That's good. Which is by far the best part of any day on a boat. And anybody who has ever sailed will tell you the same. Subscribe to Dave so you can watch him cross the ocean. <laughs>